Let's talk about Carol Kay. Carol Kay was born March 25, 1935 in Everett, Washington. She has played on over 10,000 recordings during a career spanning over 50 years. Kay began playing guitar in her early teens, performing regularly on the Los Angeles jazz and big band circuit. In 1957, Kay was playing a gig in Hollywood when she was invited to a recording session for Sam Cooke's arrangement of Summertime. She realized she could make significantly more money with session work than playing in jazz clubs. In 1958, she played acoustic rhythm guitar on Richie Valens' song La Bamba, recorded in Hollywood with producer Phil Spector. After a bassist failed to turn up at a session in 1963, she switched to bass guitar, quickly making a name for herself as one of the most in-demand session players of the 1960s. Kay played on over 40 television show themes, including MASH, The Brady Bunch, Hawaii Five-O, and Mission Impossible, as well as on over 100 film scores. She has played on countless radio hits, some of her personal favorites her summertime, Good Vibrations, Wichita Lineman, Sloop John B., You've Lost That Loving Feeling, and Feeling All Right. At 87, she is still an active performer and teaches bass and guitar. Joni Mitchell, born November 7, 1943, is a Canadian-American singer-songwriter. She has received many accolades, including 10 Grammy Awards and an induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1997. Mitchell contracted polio at age 9, and it was during her recovery in the hospital that she began performing and singing to patients. At age 11, she moved with her family to the city of Saskatoon, which she considers her hometown. Eventually, she taught herself guitar from a Pete Seeger songbook. Polio had weakened her left hand, so she devised alternative tunings to compensate. She later used these tunings to create non-standard approaches to harmony and structure in her songwriting. Mitchell struggled at school. Her main interest was painting. One of her teachers encouraged her to write poetry. Her first album is dedicated to him. She went to Alberta College of Art in Calgary for the 1963-64 school year. She moved to the United States, and in 1968, she recorded her first album, Joni Mitchell, produced by David Crosby. Mitchell's compositions were unique musically, and her lyrics were poetic and thought-provoking. She widened her repertoire to include her favorite performers, such as Edith Piaf and Miles Davis. Her first paid performance was at age 19 at a Saskatoon club that featured folk and jazz performers. Mitchell said, My jazz background began with one of the early Lambert, Hendrix, and Ross albums. That album, The Hottest New Group in Jazz, was hard to find in Canada, she says, so I saved up and bought it at a bootleg price. I considered that album to be my Beatles. I learned every song off of it, and I don't think there is another album anywhere, including my own, which I know every note and every word of every song. Joni switched labels and began exploring more jazz-influenced melodic ideas by way of lush pop textures, such as the 1974 album Court and Spark. Her distinctive piano and open-tuned guitar compositions also grew more harmonically and rhythmically complex as she melded jazz with rock and roll, R&B, classical music, and non-Western beats. In the late 1970s, she began working with noted jazz musicians including Jaco Pastorius, Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, and Pat Metheny, as well as Charles Mingus, who asked her to collaborate on his final recordings. She quit touring and released her 17th and last album of original songs in 2007. She produced or co-produced most of her albums, and keeping with her roots in the visual arts, Joni painted 19 of her 21 album covers. She had a near-fatal aneurysm in 2015, which left her unable to speak or walk, much less play guitar. Fans were ecstatic to see Mitchell's surprise appearance at the Newport Folk Festival, June 26th of this year, playing her first full set in more than two decades. Let's talk about Hazel Scott. <laughs> Hazel Dorothy Scott was born in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago on June 11, 1920. Scott was a child musical prodigy receiving scholarships to study at the Juilliard School when she was eight. Hazel was the only child of R. Thomas Scott, a West African scholar from Liverpool, and Alma Long Scott, a classically trained pianist and music teacher. In 1924, they moved to Harlem, New York City. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, Scott performed jazz, blues, ballads, Broadway, boogie woogie, and classical music in various nightclubs. From 1934 to 1943, she was a leading attraction at both the Down town and uptown branches of Cafe Society. By 1945, Scott was earning $75,000 a year, which would be around $1.1 million today. She was the first person of African descent to have their own television show in America, The Hazel Scott Show, premiered July 3, 1950. She appeared in five Hollywood films. She made her television acting debut in 1973 on the ABC daytime soap opera One Life to Live, performing a wedding song. On October 2, 1981, Hazel Scott died of cancer at Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. She was 61 years old. Jessie Mae Hemphill, born October 18, 1923, east of the Mississippi Delta, was a guitarist, songwriter, and vocalist specializing in the North Mississippi Hill country blues. She began playing guitar at the age of seven. She also learned harmonica and played drums in local fife and drum bands. 
1981, her first album, She Wolf, was released by the French label Disc Vogue. In the early 1980s, Hip Hill performed in another drum group with Abe Young and Fife and Drum Band veteran Otha Turner for the television program Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Hemp Hill played concerts all over the world. In 1987 and 1988, she received the W.C. Handy Award for Best Traditional Female Blues Artist. In 1993, Hemp Hill had a stroke which paralyzed her left side, preventing her from playing the guitar. She retired from her blues career but continued to play by accompanying her band on the tambourine. Hemp Hill died on July 22, 2006 at the Regional Medical Center in Memphis after complications from an ulcer. Beverly Guitar Watkins was born in Atlanta, Georgia on April 6, 1939. Watkins recorded her first solo album at 60, but since her teens, she'd been playing guitar on stages with the likes of James Brown, B.B. King, and Ray Charles. Taj Mahal called Watkins a flat-out musician who can duke it out on stage with the best there is, man, woman, or child prodigy. In high school, she played bass for a band called Billy West Stone and the Downbeats. Around the year 1959, she joined Piano Red and the Meter Tones. About the time the group renamed itself Piano Red and the House Rockers, they started touring nationally. After the breakup of the band in about 1965, Watkins played with the Ink Spots and Leroy Redding in the House Rockers until the late 1980s. She was rediscovered by Tim Duffy in 1998. He started booking her in package shows as part of the All-Star Women of Blues Hot Mamas Tour. Her 1999 CD debut, Back in Business, earned a W.C. Handy Award a nomination in 2000. Watkins was playing internationally as well as in her hometown of Atlanta until temporarily sidelined by surgery in 2005. Watkins died after a heart attack on October 1, 2019 at the age of 80. 